Hi you guys, how's my favorite second graders doing? We are starting book three of five books. This one is called River Story. You'll be on the second page. If you can't print these out though, it's okay. Just make sure you're writing down the um, questions for each book. But if you are printing it out, it's on the second sheet. Don't forget to fill out what the topic is for this book the message that the author wants us to learn, and two interesting or important facts. This one's called River Story. It's by Meredith Hooper, illustrated by B. Wiley. And our focus question today is, you're gonna be looking for new words that you learn about a river, and why is the river important? So here we go, River Story. Looking for new words about rivers. Thousands of rivers help to shape the surface of our planet. They bring water and life to the land and all that use it. Icy cold racing rivers, slow muddy wide rivers, long rivers, small rivers, rivers underground. Each river is different. Each river makes its own exciting, mysterious journey. Join us on this one. Here's the title page. Very cool picture above there. All rivers have a beginning. High in the mountains, the snow is melting. Trickles of water are running together, bubbling through moss, dripping down legend, ledges, coming together in a stream. No, so that was a bird up there. Just saw that. A small shining stream slipping over pebbles, skidding around rocks, bumping into roots. Fed by a waterfall, bouncing down boulders, fed by another stream, smaller and faster. Snowfalls of water, springfuls of water, streamfuls of water coming together in a river. Ooh, this looks pretty. This would be a fun place to swim. Look at that. How many of you guys have gone swimming in a river before? If you go to Cottonwood Beach, that's the Columbia River. The river races down deep, narrow valleys, milky cold, rattling bold, fast moving river, scooping up earth, digging out stones, mining the mountains, wearing them down. The river swirls busily under a bridge. Stand on the bridge and look down at the water. You can't see the bottom. You can't see how deep. You can't see the shapes hidden under the surface. Trunks of old trees, big fish waiting. Little fish darting, bottles dropped, treasures lost. River is quieter leaving the mountains. It winds between meadows, sorry. It winds between meadows, long strands of water weed streaking its surface. Willow trees lean their leaves in the water. People row boats trailing their fingers. Cows come drinking, their sharp hooves sinking into the sticky brown river brown mud. That looks fun. 
So now we're getting to the people and the animals all using the river. Something to ask yourself, why is the river important to animals? Why is the river important to people? The river grows wider and deeper and stronger. Fast currents ripple its silky brown surface. The water moves silently onto the city. Inside the city, the river is crowded, jostling by buildings, hemmed in by roads. The traffic moves over and under and around it. Drains spill their water, stray dogs slink by, and up and down the river go. Slow moving barges and bright busy ferries, shiny glass tour boats and tough little tugs. The river is slowing, sliding past mudflats, looping through marshes, carrying its load of earth and leaves, tin cans and cartons and bits of old wood. That makes me wonder about all the trash, cans and cartons and bits of old wood. Wonder how that affects the animals that live there. Where the river reaches the edge of the land, waves wash the sand and fresh water melts salt water. The sea birds are calling, the sea winds are blowing. The journey is over. So this is where the ocean and the river meet. And if you've ever been in Astoria, that is where the Columbia River and the Pacific Ocean meet. Is that right, Mr. Dana? Yeah. Yep. Those are some rough waters. If you've ever gone over the Astoria Bridge, you, it's a pretty cool bridge. It's called the Bar. All rivers have a beginning. Trace the river from start to finish and discover some new river words along the way. In the beginning of a river is called its source. Some rivers start with melting snow and ice. Others begin with a spring bubbling up from underground. That word was source. A stream that joins another stream or river is called a tributary. A fast-moving river carries along lots of pebbles and soil, and these rub against the riverbed like sandpaper. Slowly wearing away, this wearing away of the land is called erosion. A river moves slowly when it leaves the mountains instead of rushing downhill. It often winds around bins called meanders. A river flows lazily across a flat plain. It's muddy water, thick with tiny pieces of worn rock called mud flats, form where the river dumps this load. And then we have this right here. It says down river, which means toward the sea. Sooner or later, all rivers in the empty their water into lakes or into the sea. And every river has an end. So I'll hold this again for you. If you want to pause this so that you can look at the words carefully and write it down. See if I can get nice and close for you. If you want to pause it for a second so you can write it. There's that side of the book. And then if you want to pause for this side, there's some more river vocabulary words you can look at. Let's go ahead and pause it. And then you can fill out your worksheet. Okay, and that was the river story. 
Hope you like that one. It has some nice pictures. All these books are really neat. I wish we were in our classroom looking at them so that you can actually take them back to your seats and look through the pictures. They're pretty cool. Have a great day, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.